What's up guys, this is Ram Kebab back with another episode of the Bodo Glimpse Road to the Top. Oh, I, I always forget the name of that. Anyway, this is the pre-season roundup episode because obviously we're going into our fourth season now. We've just about got a game but I'm not going to do that today because knowing my laptop it will crash. And one thing I do have open, so everything goes a lot quicker, And everything, but it does make... See, actually this guy's not quick, but it does sometimes mean this doesn't come up straight away. So this goes a lot faster, because I've got, I got some workspace, and also from Dom, I don't know if you know him, he's a Derby fan as well. Um, He was streaming yesterday, I was talking about the other games, obviously, and they were talking about the cheat engine thing. So this is it, you just go into it, you open up the process from here, click that, and you go on FM. Go on to enable speed hack, and just set that to whatever you want. I've got mine on 5, because of the badness of my computer. But... It does make compute. It does make the game go a lot faster. Um, right, let's go straight to transfers. Actually, no. Wait, let's do fixtures first because there's a lot of transfers. Um, beat. We were on a tour of Turkey. Beat Turkat Spor one nil. Kamara scoring goal. Beat Kizilhaspor. <laughs> um, if you're Turkish, can you please tell me how to say that? What are those letters? Seriously. Um, beat them two nil with a. Quite a full strength. Actually, no, it's not. It's a completely unstrength lineup. You'll see a couple of new faces in here, obviously. One all draw away at Moras Paul, which I was disappointed by because we were playing pretty much our first team. But Fronia got injured and he's not going to play the first game of the season, annoyingly. And then drew one all away at Hassan, who are our feeder team, who actually got promoted last season. Look, every one of those, all of those are all my players. They're all from my second team, and a lot of them are beasts. All of them. And I'll show you the all in a second. And they got promoted last season in second place from the third division. Mainly due to loan players. They've got even better ones now. So they should be pretty tank. Uh, I'll probably play up to about the Valorenga game. And maybe I'll either show the Valorenga home game or the Rolled Away game. So I got Brand start off with us in second place, which was quite annoying. Six players in ineligible. Unfortunately, you have to, you'd only have nine non-homegrown players, which is really bad for me because I have so many. So I've got a tiny squad now, because uh, I've got so many non-homegrown players that will be playing. But anyway, I'll show you the transfers. Um, let me just show you last season's transfers first, because I forgot to show you some of them. Um, no, hold on. See, this is what I mean by the speed tag. It does affect a bit. Um, anyway, just quickly show these bits. Um, we signed. George Ivan Ibarra, seriously though, look at this guy's tank. Two and a half star, four and a half star potential. Very good player. Pete Carroll, another player who's gone on loan 20 and under 20 appearances for the US, and now they're all making the under 23 appearances. They're all getting into the Olympic qualifying squads. And John Chapman, another under 20 player. These are just a very good players. Attacking 14, heading 14 and 19, that's very good. Um, that's a, actually a very good tip for me to you guys. Just, are these guys actually playing? Or are they retired? No, they're actually playing. If you just look at the US uh, squad, even if you can't scout them, try and sign some of their players, because they always have players on free transfers. And these guys are going to be good enough for the Champions League, eventually. So I don't know why they got released, really. Um, with this logo pack, the uh, the Irish badges are all messed up. Anyway, I'll go to the Alks first. Eki, he was good at the start, but he never really progressed, and he went up to 9k. Obviously, his value shot up to 100k. I could have sold him for a lot more, and I keep forgetting to do this. I haven't forgotten to do this with one player, who you'll see in a second, who's really boosted up out as a 7 gem. But Eki's gone, but I wasn't playing him anyway. Andreas Kavikius just wasn't getting in the squad, so I just let him go on a free. Uh, Gil Kamar, he was in the... Brazil under 20 squad, so I signed him based on the reputation, but he's really bad. Look, 420 appearances, but he was one and a half star potential. I was just like, what? How is he in the under 20 squad? Another player who seemed good at the start when I signed him, he's got decent stats. Diego Serna, 28 under 20 appearances. He's got very good stats, but he only had a two star uh, potential ability, and I was just like, that's first division standard, there's no point. All these players are out on loan. And I'll show you these players. Um, these are the big transfers here. Laurie Dalval, 
the 60k went out. Uh, he left because he just wasn't getting with the squad. Um, he's foreign, so, and I prefer to play Ponzio as our backup because he's a young player. Fredrickson, Fredrickson left for 26k because he has been moaning for ages. He was on a bit of a w quite a bit of wage as well, but he's been moaning for ages about not playing first team football. And I'm just like, mate. Jim Johansson is ten times better than you. You're not going to start, and King of Sang was also better than you at Group Line Playmaker. So I don't want to play him. But he kept moaning, kept moaning, kept moaning. Wouldn't sign a new contract. His contract was coming up at the end of this year, so I just sold him. Needs money off him. Thomas Grogard. This guy could have been unbelievable. He had four and a half sub potential when I signed him, right at the start of the first season. But zero for free. But he had forty five percent sell on clause, so most of that money went to odd anyway but he got he broke his leg unfortunately for him and was out for five months so he just went downhill and he went down to like two star potential one star can't have been too so it's like there's no point now um this is the big one 825k papa aliuna indai you might be thinking why have you sold this guy he's a very good defensive midfielder you'll see in a second why he's gone okay <laughs> He's gone to Djurgården in Sweden, because apparently he's going to be a first teamer there, which is good for me because they're in the Champions League, and he went because he said he was going to play a major role in the Champions League, which is obviously good for him, but yeah, it's pretty good we sold him. Um, I originally offered him up to 250k, and we got bids for that from like teams like Slavia Prague, so then I sold him. Sorry, I offered him up again for 850 to see if anyone would put a bid for that. And Jigan did, and the president of the club made me sell him. Well, he did the negotiations himself, which is a bit annoying, but I was going to sell him for that amount of money anyway. And the press were like, oh, do, you not like do you not like your president getting into your actions? I was like, I don't really care because I was going to sell him anyway. But So yeah, that's a very good chance for him to see how it's boosted our coffers. Not by much, but I'm just... Literally, I'm just waiting for the, um, what's this called to come in? The Champions League revenue, then we'll be fine. Coming in, obviously, you already see Diego Serna. Garis Planter came in from Portmore United in Jamaica. Already got two appearances from Jamaica when he's 18. Very good player. 13 headed and 13 marking towards tackling. Fantastic player. Already a good player. So he's our fourth choice. He's already above Isaac Shearer and Bi Shearer Gius, though. Geosta starts because I just love London. 220 more appearances with Germany says it all to be honest. And he's 19. That's how good he is. I don't know why he was let go. But Gary's plant is going to be very good in the future. These guys, I'm just waiting for them now to hopefully, hopefully stay in the club long enough to gain the Norwegian nationality or at least be at the club for three years because then they can actually and become homegrown status because then they, he can stay there before 21. So he'll become fully homegrown if he stays. So that's good. Uh, Sergi Sampa. This is the big signing. We spent no money because we had no money, but that's the player. This guy has one only two appearances for Barcelona. So, yeah, he was from Barcelona, but for Spain. 15 passing, 15 tackling. So I'm playing him as a deep flying uh, defensive midfielder. Obviously, this is switched a bit, but. Obviously, I would like to play him at Anchorman, but. He's got very good stats for it. It's just no anticipation, determination, or strength, and not the best position or marking. So, so I'm playing him as a deep flying playmaker, defend. He needs to improve on his positioning and his um, marking, but I'm probably going to improve his positioning mostly. There we go. His marking is not as important as my strength, to be honest. Are you playing deep flying playmaker? I don't. He's out on twi to the 2020 as well, so he's got a five year deal. Which is very good because he's a fantastic player. Anyway. Yeah, already three star leading player in the um, in the Premier League. And he's only 19, is he? Or is he 20? He's 21, whatever. But he, if you play him as a support, he's even better. So yeah, I might just play him as a support and improve his positioning. And he'll be an absolute tank. Look at those stats. The only stats that aren't 14 or 15 are, are these two. Neither of them 14 or 14 or 10. That's amazing. So yeah, that should be good. 
uh, Felipe Daughter. You, got, you guys might know this guy because he's been around for a long while. 20 on 20 appearances, 300 under 20 goals for um, Brazil. You might uh, know this guy because he's from SCR Altac in Austria, who Messi just got promoted last season. He never played very well, but I've seen this guy many, many times, and I've been trying to sign him since the start of the game, always on a free, because he never signs a contract for them, like, full time. And he finally got released by them, because he's ripped on the contract. Like, before he was trying to get 2.1k wages, and I was just like, um, no. And now, then he only wanted, what was it? 450 pan, pan a week, so, you know, I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity. He's a good player as well, so. But he won't play this season, because again, he can't get in the squad. Nils Christian Jakobsen, obviously mostly signings are for the future because that's what we're trying to do. He's gone on loan to Assam, 17 year old Norwegian player. He's got four star potential, so you know he's probably become one of Norway's best players. Paul Lawrence, there were three players in the Holland under 20s, the only three players in the Holland under 20s, and they were all on free transfers. They were all without clubs, so I signed one of them, the best one, Paul Lawrence, three and a half star potential. Could become decent, hopefully, will. Uh, Claus Thomas, this guy is signed on a free from Denmark. Found in Denmark under 21s. Already 3 under 22 in appearances at 18. This guy's busting out with David Visser, the uh, the young Holland keeper who's now my backup to become the, the backup, well, not backup, but eventual first choice. And then Costa Dibu is also there, so they're good players. 17 year old Irish player, already got an under 20 appearance. Four and a half star potential, extremely good player, really looking forward to him, and this guy I'm really surprised by. He got a bit annoyed when I placed him in the second team because he won't get appearances in the first team because he can't get in, obviously. But he's got amazing stats, 16 first touch, 15 technique, 11 passing, and he's already 3 star current ability, 3 and a half star, so whoa, look at days, he's, unbel he's literally unbelievable. And this guy's already got... 19 years old as well, 14 under 20 appearances, 5 under 20 goals, just waiting for them to become homegrown. Which hopefully won't be too long, but it probably will be. That's one annoying thing, I don't have many Norwegian players, and I have no money to spend on them, so... It's a bit annoying. But anyway, same tactics as before, except a boring midfielder defend, and Abdu Kamara is finally going to start starting. And the deep line playing like a support from the from the man role. Sample's going to play there. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. Uh, yeah. Not much else to say, really. Um, anyway, that is the pre-season roundup. Hopefully, my goals for this season are to at least get to the group stage of the Champions League. Obviously, that's not until mid-season, when we even get into the qualifying rounds. But, so we've got to wait a while. But as you can see, we've got a very high potential in the squad. Our lowest potential players are only two and a half star, but that's still decent. Um, Amundsen, well, I've never really played him, so you can you can understand why he's never come to much, but it's a bit annoying. But everyone else, like still three star, two and a half star, three star, and everyone else apart from that, three and a half star at least. Nordberg, Berglund, Mango, Minetti, and daughter Osanga, Udegbe. Udegbe still hasn't improved his current ability. I don't know why. He's twenty four. When's his birthday? But you can tell you that later, doesn't it? Well, he's half German, apparently. I mean, he doesn't sa he does sound it. Udig B sounds half Nigerian, half German, but he's not got any caps in him, unfortunately. Which is a bit annoying, because he's a very good player. He just does not tell me when he's born. That's kind of annoying. Let's see when he becomes 25. Oh, yeah, he's played for Kieran, Dusseldorf, and Essen, and left on a free. And he loaned out and then came to us. So finally, my top sale is bigger than my top uh, playable team. Uh, why don't I like Tommy Narvik? I don't understand. He's a very good player. I love him. Can I approach to sign him as a staff? Yes, I can. Um, is he any good as a staff? Whoa, he's pretty decent, actually. Um, but I don't want him as a system manager. I want him as just a minimal coach. Because I do want him there, because he's a, he's actually quite a good coach. Can you accept? There we go. Cool. He's actually a very good coach, so, and he's a club legend. 
so I do want to keep them here. Um, right, let me show you one more thing. Just show you how we're doing on the information book. We're now a favoured personnel, finally, and Thomas Runyon has become an icon. It's always a good thing. And um, Sidney Hansen, he's an icon as well, but he's a bad coach, so we had not start as a bad coach, so I'm not going to sign him. Alright, thank you. Right. Let me just show you my assistant manager, though. He's a very good assistant manager. Like, he was here at the start. I never signed him. And he's a tank of a manager. Look at this guy. Look at those stats. They're unbelievable. I don't know how I got such a good assistant manager from the start. He's got a long contract as well. And I'm just hoping... I'm probably going to get rid of George Castello as our director of football because he's not great. Uh, yeah, he's gonna definitely going to go uh, after the mutual formation. Yeah, let's go. Alright, that'll be it for today. Um, I'll see you guys next time.